Good morning. Good morning to everybody in the sanctuary choir. Thank you for being here and for anybody who's watching online. Thank you for um, checking in this morning. Welcome to Lynn Haven Colony Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, where we say no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're most welcome here. Uh, this is the second Sunday of Advent, and we're going to move right along into if there are any visitors. We have little yellow cards or the different colors in the pews there. If you'd like to fill one of those out and put it in the offering plate, we'll be happy to get in touch with you and let you know a little bit more about the church. Um, the bulletin is full of announcements, so everybody please read through the bulletins. Some things to be aware of. There is a whole list of Advent and Christmas services in there. It gives you the schedule for the remainder of the month. Um, poinsettias, if you're interested in buying a poinsettia, the deadline for that is next Sunday. The forms are on the back table. And then along, along with that, there are Advent devotionals in the back. So if you didn't get one of those, you might want to pick those up. They're terrific. I've been reading through them. Everybody's done a really nice job. Thank you for participating in that, whoever has done those. Um, another thing on the back of the bulletin there are several special appeals. Um, you might read through those and consider um, supporting one of those. Um, we have a list of prayer requests in the bulletin, so keep those people in mind. Uh, we have... Um, Another little announcement here by Kathy Combs. Uh, just a reminder that next Sunday will be the last day books will be collected. And she wants to thank everybody who has already donated. She has over 200 books so far. So that's terrific for her collection. And then Jim, Jim has, there he is, he has a little announcement. Good morning. I wanted to give you a quick update on our reusable bag collection program um, and congratulate you for bringing as many bags as you brought in already. I wanted to give you an idea of where they're going. We've already distributed over a thousand bags and, we're, and, and more and more are going out the door every week. Um, where are they going? Well, they're going to the JCOC to reach the homeless population. They're going to Eastern Shore Chapel. <clears throat> food pantry, as well as the Unitarian Universalist food pantries to serve uh, the working poor. The Eastern Shore Chapel, as an example, sir, uh, feeds over 100, 450 families a week. So we also have three low-income apartment complexes that we've distributed them to, as well as the Virginia Department of Health, as well as the uh, Women, Infant, and Children's Program locally. So. We're reaching lots of folks, and uh, th remember this is to get reusable bags into the hands of people who may not have easy access to them once the grocery stores stop providing plastic bags. So, you know, Lynn Haven River now is into it because we want to get plastics out of the environment, but really we want to get reusable bags into the hands of folks and encourage them to use them along the way. So thanks for your help. Uh, dig through your closets and your trunks and continue to stuff our bin and I, uh, I assure you that they're going to get in to the hands of people who really need them. Thanks a lot. Bye. Are there any other additional um, prayer requests at this time? Okay. As we enter now into our service of worship, Will those who are able please stand for today's choral introit?
Thank you, choir. If you could please join me in the responsive call to worship. From the flurry of holiday busyness, we come longing for peace, yearning for lasting joy, hoping to find our rest in God. From the worries of our days, we come to be set free. May we follow the Prince of Peace, the joy of every long lot. If everybody can please bow their heads and join me in prayer. God of the waiting wanderers in the wilderness, we enter this moment of worship expecting that when we leave this hour of prayer, we will be full of the courage needed to stand as a signal. We come to the mountain to feel closer to your presence, O oh God. May the mountains yield prosperity for your people. May righteousness flourish and peace abound. You alone are the God who does wondrous things. As we worship you in the spirit and in the truth, may your glory fill this place. Amen. Amen. And now if we can all sing, Come, O Long Expected Jesus, that is printed in your bulletin. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I'd like to turn to your neighbor and wish everybody peace. you may be seated and I would like to invite the Bailey family to please come up and they're going to lead us in the lighting of this week's Advent candle. Good morning church. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful out day out there. Uh, second uh, Sunday of Advent. Um, today's first Advent scripture reading is recorded in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 9 through 10. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, 
and his dwelling shall be glorious. We're the followers of that root of Jesse that Isaiah speaks of. We're the ones who now who are now called to stand as a signal to the world, to all of creation, that peace is the will of the one who created us. Peace is the knowledge of the Lord that we proclaim from sea to shining sea. Our second reading is recorded in Matthew chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 8. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near, and bear fruit worthy of repentance. We light these candles, the candle of joyful hope and the candle of proclaimed peace, in part to remind ourselves that we are a people rising toward God's promise. But we also light them as a sign to the world, an announcement there are some who hold on to hope and there are some who work the ways of peace. We stand as a sign that Emmanuel is still our fervent prayer. Please join me in praying today's Advent prayer. Prince of Peace, you came came to to us us in the the form of a child, in the weakness and vulnerability of an infant. Your lowly birth reminds us that peace comes to us when we throw off our arrogance and put on instead the cloak of humility. May we have the courage to break down the barriers that separate your people to spread your peace near and far. Amen. like to invite any and all of the children that are here today to come forward. I'm going to let you all sit there on the front step. I'm going to sit down here bar this little bench. Boy, that thing's live. Hey! It's good to see Gwendolyn and William, right? Eleanor, I always get your two names mixed up. How could that be? Good to see you. Uh, Getting a lot of feedback. Should I turn one of these off? He's working on it. Okay. Um, Since I'm a little bit of a distance from you, is it okay if I take my mask off? Everybody feel comfortable with that? No, you don't? Okay. I'll (laughs) honor your request. I'll honor that. That's why I asked, right? Um, 
I want to tell you a story that I remember my father telling me. He was a minister, just like I am. And you would think uh, I would remember what I, when I was a child, what I would call the big people sermon. You'd think I would remember those words. But you know, the stories I remember are the ones he told the children. That's what I remember. Uh, and I bet that's true of a lot of the folks out here. They probably remember the children's talks more than they do the sermons. Who knows? But here's the, here's the story. It involves a, a little boy and his mother. And one day he walked up to his mother and he gave her a piece of paper that had been folded. And she unfolded it and it had a list. And it said, I, Timmy, your son, submit this bill for all the things I've done for the family, for emptying the trash, one dollar, for making my bed, one dollar, for feeding the dog, one dollar, for uh, making sure that I went to bed on time without any fussing, one dollar. Total, have you been keeping up with it? Four dollars. Is that right? And the mother kind of read over it, and then what do you think, she, how do you think she might have responded? A little confused. And so she went and found her own piece of paper and she wrote down some things and she folded it and she gave it to her son. He opened it and he read it and it said, I, your mother, submit this bill to you, my son, Timmy, for giving you birth. <laughs> Nothing for cooking your meals, nothing. For taking care of you when you are sick, nothing. For snuggling with you and telling you I love you, nothing. Total nothing, right? What do you think Timmy did when he got that, after he finished reading that? A little confused again. A little shocked. Why do you think he was shocked, Wyatt? A bill for nothing at all. There's nothing um, that he earned. Right, right. But. So what uh, Timmy said, he took his piece of paper and he wadded it up and he threw it away. And he said, I'm sorry, Mommy. From now on, I'll be good for nothing. <laughs> that makes sense. So Timmy, he, you know, he felt like he ought to be reimbursed or rewarded for doing good things for the family. And what his mom was trying to teach him is that when you really love somebody, uh, you do things for them, not for what you will get out of it, but just because you love them to show. Well, certainly I want to encourage you in your own family to show your love for your mom and dad. And if you have a brother or sister, it could be your grandparents or cousins or uncles or aunts. It could be some of your friends. It could be, believe this, total strangers to do nice things for them. Not because you're going to get anything in return, but just you want to be nice to other people. Uh, can anybody think of anything you could do at home uh, just to be nice for the sake of other folks? Picking up dog poop with a vacuuming floor <laughs> and, and dusting. And dusting, yes. Anybody else have an idea? Cleaning up my room. 
cleaning up the room. Luca? Cleaning up the entire church, which I really want to do. You want to clean up the church? The entire church. Get this man a <laughs> dust rag. How do you, what do you think needs it first? Uh, the bathroom. The bathrooms, okay. Our new custodian. I think there should be the chairs, and also what you should do, you should all, you should do um, dust the inside and the roofs, no matter the curtain. Okay, well, I'm a little leery about putting you guys on the roof. Uh, I think that's a dangerous thing. Yeah. What are some things you could do for your friends to let them know you care about them? Any ideas? When uh, they're sick, you can make them a good well card. A get well card if they're sick. Being nice entirely to them. Entirely nice to them. To not do what you want to do to um, uh, agree what you guys want to do. Oh, maybe not just doing what you yourself want to do, but maybe what your friend would want to do. How about a total stranger? How could you do something nice for them? We'll start again at the end. Um, if a total stranger is trying to carry groceries out of its car, you could help them. Oh, that's great, carrying groceries for someone else. Helping to pay a medical bill for them because I actually did that. You paid someone's medical bill? Maybe like 50 cents, but I only had a one lucky penny, so I gave him one. That lucky. is great, Luca. Saying hello. Saying hello. And I don't know if you see people do this much anymore, but if you're at like a grocery store or another store, opening a door for someone, that means a lot to some folks. And letting them walk through the door before you do. So you do that a hundred times. Keep doing it. So I want you to continue to do nice things for everybody and make them feel special, all right? Anyone like to offer today's prayer? I know Wyatt's always going to volunteer. I wanna see if anybody else wants an opportunity. No, you're willing to defer. Okay, thank you, Wyatt. Lord, all of these earths, and I know I'm saying it over and over again, but that's the best way to remember it. You can't remember one word after I wouldn't say it one time in one day, but um, all kindness on the earth spreads around with your Holy Spirit, and Satan is not above you. You're above anything else, and one of um, the Ten Commandments is where you, sh I mean, that no one should put anything else first before uh, thy the Lord, and you should... And never, ever let anything sad happen, and all tears shall go away. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we'll talk about that, okay? He said once church is over, can he actually clean this place? <laughs> Deacons put him to work. All right, let's sing our hallelujahs. to the scriptures reading. Pastor Phil has asked me to read several short scripture passages 
each a statement by Jesus extolling the virtue of mercy. First one's from Matthew 5, verse 7. At the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus shared eight Beatitudes, including, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Matthew 9, 10 through 13. After the Pharisees questioned the disciple as to why their master ate with tax collectors and sinners, Jesus replied, Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. Luke 6, verse 36. After instructing his disciples to love their enemies, to do good to those who hated them, to bless those who cursed them, and to pray for those who mistreated them, Jesus concluded, be merciful as your father is merciful. Luke 10, 36 through 7, 36 through 37, at the conclusion of the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus asked the expert in the law, which one of these do you think was a neighbor? The man answered, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus responded, go and do likewise. Thank you, Jan. Uh, before I get started with today's uh, sermon, I just want to uh, recognize two things. One is, uh, I don't know if you realize, but Phoebe was playing the organ in live time. She's been given freedom from the doctor to use that broken finger. It's healed up so much. So thank you. Uh, great to hear your music talents. We appreciate it, Phoebe. And yesterday, uh, she and Ted uh, and their family, uh, we celebrated a baptism uh, for their grandchild, uh, Paxton Charles Hauser. Uh, this is Anya's uh, firstborn, and uh, it was so wonderful to gather with uh, both, the, uh, both families and uh, to celebrate that event. Uh, and I just wanted to recognize uh, Luca, today was his ver very first time serving as acolyte, and I think you did a great job, Luca. I want to start off with a uh, little story. Uh, it involves a businessman who wanted to have kind of a profile photograph taken so he could use it in his portfolio. And when the photographer was done with the photo session, uh, the businessman uh, looked through the series of photos and the only response that he could offer was, uh, these just don't do me justice. <laughs> and the photographer responded, with a face like yours, you don't need justice, you need mercy. <laughs> Mercy is the theme of our sermon today. If you weren't with us last week, uh, we're looking at uh, different phrases uh, from uh, Micah chapter 6, verse 8, which is, what does the Lord require of us but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Of course, last week we did address act uh, justly, and we move on to mercy. Uh, I wonder in your own words how you might define mercy or those situations in which you are merciful to others. Uh, if you do the standard, uh, look it up in the dictionary type of thing, you get uh, definitions like a refraining from harming or punishing offenders. Kindness in excess of what may be expected or even demeaning. Forbearance and compassion. A disposition to forgive. Here's an important word. The power to forgive or be kind. Kind or compassionate treatment. As we seek to understand how maybe these definitions are reflected in the words of Jesus, I want to briefly 
return to last week's message in which I uh, described two different forms of justice. One is retributive justice, which is based on uh, punishment often. It's mixed up with retaliation and with vengeance, making sure people get their just desserts, especially when it comes to uh, poor decisions, poor actions. Uh, and when mercy is maybe shared in these events, maybe by a judge, mercy is considered a weakness. The person should have gotten the full brunt of the law. They should have gotten beyond what is required of the law. Anytime we, and not just in the judicial system, but even in our relationships with other people, if, if we have a retributive mind, you know, we want to get back at someone. And sometimes that's what our friends and family will tell us. And if we do show those persons mercy again, people might think we're weak. So mercy in this way uh, is a loss of power. And you must maintain power over others. But then I described a, uh, a different type of justice, distributive justice. Whereas making sure all folks get their fair share. And it's not concerned with just what the people deserve. Uh, it's not based on a reward system. Well, if you put much, this much effort into it, then you get this much effort or reward out of it. It's making sure people get what they need for a basic living healing and wholeness. And sometimes mercy in this situation, in distributive uh, justice, that means giving more. It's not just sharing the very minimum that is required, but it's sharing the maximum that you were able to do. And certainly, not only, as I mentioned last week, do I think that Jesus promotes a distributive form of justice, but Jesus also offers a distribu distributive form of mercy to going over and beyond what anyone else would expect, going against conventional wisdom, and not seeing mercy as a weakness, but as a great strength. Today, uh, Jan read four passages of scripture from the Gospels devoted to mercy. Uh, and we're choosing this, uh, this theme because of the this text from Micah. And I want to point out that in that Micah text, Micah says that we are to love mercy. Not just do mercy, I think there's a great difference. If we're only doing it, sometimes it may be, well, that's what's required. That's what Jesus, that's what God expects of us, so I guess I'll do that so I get my ticket punched when it's time to go to heaven. It's, simple, it's more out of obligation. But to love mercy, that's quite different. I think it's probably best to in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, written by the Apostle Paul, where he describes love, if, if love is not your motivation, whether you can sing the most beautiful arias or even if you give your life for the sake of someone, if you have not love, they are worthless. Love should be the motivation. We are to be moved intrinsically to be merciful to other people, to go over and beyond what's simply required, and to share with people what they need. I think the most beautiful example 
uh, was the scripture reference of the Good Samaritan. The whole scenario of that was, of course, the, the expert in the law had asked Jesus, what was the greatest commandment? <clears throat> and he said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, strength, and soul. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. Wanting to kind of uh, qualify who he had to love and who he didn't, he said, well, who is my neighbor? He wanted to know, what are the parameters here? I want to just give the minimum. And Jesus gave a story that showed giving the maximum. Even learning to serve and be merciful to someone like the Samaritan who a Jew would otherwise not come in contact with. So mercy often involves reaching out and interacting with people that we are just uncomfortable with. Jesus says, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. If they slap you on the cheek, turn the other. That's hard to swallow. That seems like weakness. But for Jesus, it is great strength. And we are to go to the links of life to be merciful unto others. I want to close by sharing with you a description of a, a video clip uh, I watched years ago uh, about Mother Teresa. Now I think she's called Saint Teresa of Calcutta. She's been elevated. She was visiting uh, Beirut while it was being bombed. And uh, she learned in the process that there was a group of handicapped children uh, in a neighborhood who needed help. And she insists on those around her that she needs to go into the war zone to help these children. And others try to dis dissuade her by describing the grave dangers. And she, she replies, it's not a choice. I must be. And they beg her to wait for the ceasefire. And she tells them uh, to prepare for the next day for she has prayed for a ceasefire to come soon. And uh, the ambassador is with her, kind of incredulous. He knows there's going to be no ceasefire. And he kind of says, okay, if there's a ceasefire tomorrow, we'll let you go in. Well, guess what happened the next day? No bombing, ceasefire, all is quiet. And they go in and they carry these children uh, to a hospital where they can be safe and secure. And the closing scene of this video is Mother Teresa is holding a severely uh, handicapped child, disabled, and he's shaking all over from fear. And she calmly strokes his head, his chest, his arms, his legs. And as she's doing this, you can just see the fear draining out of this child. I think she has truly, he has truly been treated by an ambassador of God. So friends, may we truly continue to love mercy and to seek out opportunities to share that with everyone we meet and bring them new healing and new life. In Christ's name.
those of you who may be visiting, who are new to Lynn Haven Colony Congregational Church, our congregation celebrates communion the first Sunday of each month. And we do invite you to come any Sunday, of course, but uh, if you enjoy communion, first Sundays of the month. And as described in our, our bulletin, uh, our table is open to all. We exclude no one for any reason whatsoever. Whether you are a member of this church, another church, or no church at all. Whether you are a person of deep, uh, abiding faith, uh, a person of questioning faith, or a person not sure of your faith, you are still welcome to this table. We believe that just as Jesus sat at table with persons from all walks of life, that we too carry on that tradition. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome at this table. Friends, will you please join me with the, uh, the prayer, the communion prayer within the bulletin. The God of creation be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts with gladness. We lift them up to God. Let us give God thanks and praise. Loving Creator, close to us as breathing and distant as the farthest star, we thank you for your constant love for all you have made. We thank you for all that sustains life, for all people of faith in every generation who have given themselves to, you will, to your will and for the Christ whom you have sent from your own being. We praise you for the calling forth of your church and for our mission in the world. Gifted by the presence of your Holy Spirit, we now offer ourselves to you as we unite our voices in singing your praise. Brothers and sisters, we remember that on the evening that Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room, after celebrating the Jewish Passover, he shared words and actions that the disciples had never experienced before. He took bread and blessed it and broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup of blessing, a very important part of the Jewish Passover. But he gave it a new blessing. And he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. As we seek to be fed spiritually by this simple and sacred meal. May we offer a blessing not only upon these uh, elements, but may we ask for a blessing from our Creator. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this, this banquet presented and prepared for us today. We pray that as we share in this meal that we will see that it is not just a meal of the past, nor of the present, but it's really a meal of the future where all 
discover and experience your, your loving and gracious peace. We know that through this meal, Jesus offered himself. And we pray that in sharing this meal and recommitting ourselves to the teachings of Christ, that we'll recommit ourselves to your ministry and mission in this world. Bless us with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ, amen. Beloved, these are the gifts of God for all of us, the people of God. Come and let us share in the meal. Friends, the bread of life, the bread of heaven, for you and for me, let us eat together.
beloved, the cup of salvation, the cup of blessing for you, for me. Let us drink together. Join me now for a prayer of thanksgiving. God of mystery and wonder, we rejoice that you have gathered us at the table in communion of your Christ and have fed us once again with your forgiving grace. Send us forth with courage renewed, friendship strengthened, to love as we have been loved and to heal as we have been healed. In your holy name. And now, beloved, as we have received the gifts of God, we enter into a portion of our service where we share our gifts with one another within this congregation and with the community. May the gifts we receive today support the mission and witness of our congregation. Let us receive our morning offering. Gracious God, we dedicate these gifts that have been shared today for the building up of the beloved community. Let these gifts do justice in the world and let them be a sign of mercy that we share with all. We thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Friends, our closing hymn today is hymn number 677, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
sharing today's uh, benediction, I just have to point out uh, how incredibly wonderful that offertory was. Um, I think Phoebe, uh, she's a great jazz player. And I love the way she jazzes up Christian music. I think you need to do that to all of our hymns as well. <laughs> we can really rock this place for you. Thank you. Friends, as we go forth in the name of God, may God's everlasting grace give us the ability to see beauty everywhere and within everyone. May that grace fill our hearts with compassion, overflowing with mercy to all. And may that grace especially give us new strength and boldness to share in the name of God. May we go in peace. Amen. Amen. Yes.